That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to a how to best build a roster in college football in the modern era edition of the Always Irish Show. As always, thank you for being here. You can find the program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. That helps old Johnny Boy out as well. Notifications on. That way you will learn it every time a new episode drops. I know you don't want to miss it. Twitter. Search bar. Always Irish. Rat. Always Irish Inc. Emails. Always Irish. ND at gmail.com. Audio only. Anywhere you want it, you can get it. If you don't want to see my face, I don't blame you. Call in line. <laughs> 312-988-15. You dial it up and tell Johnny, oh, you've heard in sick. Wait a second. Something wrong with this situation. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. I almost forgot my victory chain. What the hell's going on here? Unbelievable mistake on my part. There we go. I knew I felt naked. Something was wrong. It's the bling bling. Got it. Instagram, Facebook, Always Irish Inc. USA Today, Fighting Irish Wire. Read all about it. Patreon.com slash Always Irish. Former captain, leading tackler, by the way, Mike Goolsby and myself. Behind a paywall? What could go wrong? Thank you to everybody that's joined. All right. So now that we're downstream of getting used to NIL, some teams getting used to trying pay for play. Now that we're seeing what the portal is becoming with the mass exodus everywhere coming and going in, you know, 50 guys to Colorado, whatever. Now that we're kind of down the road on that a little bit. And we've seen a couple cycles of all this in the modern, modern era as we turn into the 12-team playoff era. Now that we've seen all that, what do you think is the best way to build a winning roster? Because there seems to be a few different approaches here used at various different schools, depending on their situation, maybe their money, their coaching, what's going on. And there's a few different ways to approach this. And we need to go over them. Number one is in-house. In-house is old school recruiting Like, we're going to go get our guys. They're going to be our guys. They're going to be the nuts and bolts of the team. Carriers of the culture. Like, going to be around a bunch of years. And and that's going to be our driver. Okay? Dabo, for example. Dabo, who's not a big portal guy, that's a great example of a head coach that just, they they have got to get more active in the portal. I think Dabo knows that, but you can tell he don't like it. He's just much more comfortable with that traditional recruiting. And those are your guys. And we're going to go win with them. And we know there are guys in our culture. So that's one way to do it. Then you have the Colorado Texas A&M, USC way to do it. And that is talent, 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 talent. I don't care. We're taking 20 transfer guys from the portal. We're taking 50 if you're Colorado. And we're taking all those guys. And if you're A&M, we're doing pay for play to buy every five-star defensive lineman at two classes ago, whatever it is. That approach, sometimes it's by necessity. If you have like a coaching turnover and 50 guys leave and you literally need to fill out a roster, then that's like a need need. 
But you and I know damn well A&M didn't do this with, with Jimbo. They thought they were pulling one over on everybody. They thought we got all this oil money, more than anybody could ever spend. We're going to go pay for play by the best team. And so they spent all that pay for play money on all those defensive linemen and everybody up front and all that kind of stuff. Jimbo's fired. USC, Lincoln Riley, he just portal out the wazoo. Te- just bring in talent, bring in talent, bring in guys. I don't care where from. Get him in here. Talent, talent, bring him all in. Ended up having a really rough year. Colorado, another rough year. Even though they got all the media attention in the world, team wasn't any good. And so I get the temptation of teams that have a bunch of NIL money to spend to try and kind of cheat code this and buy their way to where you want to go. Places that don't have a big academic standard. You could take anybody in and out of there, right? Here's the issue though. When you're doing all that, the way USC, Colorado, and A&M did it, I'm sure there's other ones. Those are just the ones right in the top of my brain. It breeds instability. I'm not talking about taking four transfers. I'm talking 24, 34, 20, 50. Instability. That has me on alarm. I don't care if it, they're all talented or whatever. That has me on alarm. Because you have all those different personalities. None of them are from your culture. Understand your culture. They're coming in. A lot of those guys are me guys. Going to the highest bidder. <clears throat> Only looking out after their NIL and their money and their brand. And they're just going to go to the highest bidder. Then you have animosity. You got a guy that's working his ass off. He ain't getting nothing. Why is this guy getting all this money and I'm not getting nothing? Why is that guy getting more money than me? You get into all those games with the personalities and the divas and the me, me, me and the money, money, money. Bounce it and I is bitter. That's dangerous. The culture piece is very dangerous. When you're flipping that many guys, it's hard to maintain your team's DNA at your school. Then there's option three. So option one is Dabo mostly in house. Option two is all that other, all the ridiculous transfer portal amount. Number three is the perfect blend. That's Notre Dame's best path. In house needs to be the priority. You build it out. You have your culture, your stability, your leaders, all of that. And then you have, I would I want a half dozen or six to 10 cherries on top at the end. Depends on your needs. How much I, I need you to do this. Sometimes it might be five or six guys. Other times it might be more. That's the, that's the winning blend here is is you stabilize your culture, you do the in-house recruiting, all those guys develop for years, that is stable as could be. Then you go get the cherries on top you need to get over the hump. And you vet the hell out of them, make sure they're in it for the right reasons and all that stuff. And do your NIL, whatever you need to do. Notre Dame's on number three, and I think it's the best way to approach it, whether you're Notre Dame or anybody else. The dabble resistance to do a lot of the portal thing. It's just that's you got to get more modern, be open to it to some level. And the AM and the USC, it makes me nervous. You're messing with your culture and you're bringing in a lot of guys that have little red flags to me about being me guys. I like that blend. You build, you have that stable culture, those leaders. 
the bulk of those guys all growing up together through Notre Dame, living all that life, doing that all, bonding. And then you drop the cherries on top. And I trust this staff to vet those guys enough to know whether they would be welcome, comfortable additions or not. Based on their personality, their vibe, how they act, you know, all that stuff. So I, I get the urge to do the A&M and the USC thing, just a talent, any way you could get it, talent in the building. But talent alone doesn't win you anything in college football. It's a requirement to win anything in college football, but talent on its own doesn't guarantee you anything. It all has to come together with leadership, with buy-in, with vibe, with Team stuff, over me stuff. Talent alone doesn't get you over the hump. So I kind of like the way Notre Dame's doing this. You you have your stability from your in-house guys. And now they're getting more flexibility to be able to add those extra cherries on top. Look at it. Where do we really need help for next year? Plop in a guy there. Plop in a guy here. I think whether you're Notre Dame or not, that should be the model. That should be the model. The the all in-house thing is just too restrictive when everybody else has other ways to gain talent on their roster. You're hamstringing yourself. But the other A&M, USC, Colorado way makes me nervous as hell about protecting my culture. Valuing our ways to do things, our rivalries, the way we feel about certain teams or games and all that. Sometimes it's hard to have that when it's all these random guys from everywhere else just popping in, make a buck. So I like the way Notre Dame's doing this. Um, And they're getting some more flexibility to be able to get some of these guys in and navigate and all that, which is good too. But I like that, man. The bulk are your homegrown dudes. And then you pop in that portal for those cherries on top. Your culture's stable. You bring in guys that can add to it. That's the sweet spot. So I like I like Notre Dame's approach on this. I also trust this staff's ability to gauge these personalities and who would be a good fit at Notre Dame and who's going to be a problem This staff is really, really good with people. They're very, very good at relationships and people. That's a big part of all of this. And you can eliminate a lot of future headaches if you do a a better job of evaluating all that on the front end rather than when you have a problem in a year or two. So this staff's good at it, and I think they're doing a good job. Keep that blend going. And I think that's the winning recipe. What do you guys think? Let me know.